Good evening and welcome back to another episode of Please Call Me Crazy, brought to you by Free People Radio and powered by our favorite sponsor, TireGit.com. That's TireGit.com. You have to buy tires from somebody. You might as well buy them from us and help fund the movement, help support the movement. We believe in the freedom of movement, and that's exactly what the establishment wants to take from you now. I am your host, Royce White, and I am here in the belly of the beast, Minneapolis, Minnesota, for episode number 84, I believe. I think it's 84. Episode number 84. Um, housekeeping to start. We are available on all major audio platforms, Apple, Amazon, Google, and Spotify, uh, as well as Rumble, um, BitChute, and Bandot video are being updated or, or caught up uh, as we speak. So you can always go to Bandot video or BitChute. If any of the major big tech video platforms decide that what I'm saying is a little too fucking real. Um, also, we are still in the process of getting um, Twitch going. I may start to do a, a little little stream game stream podcast as well, uh, spontaneously once a week. And, and that'll be like a, uh, what do I want to say, impromptu uh, podcast during the week where I just announce on that day that I'm going to do a live stream and, and play a little video game and do a podcast that way. I think it's another another good way to reach young people who play video games. Look, we all know video games have their uh, have their negative impacts on society. In many ways, it's just another another way for us to be distracted and jerk off. But I'm willing to go wherever people are uh, to 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 talk about the things that need to be talked about, especially when it comes to our young people. A lot of a lot of young people and a lot of talented brilliant young people play play video games my son uh being one of them and he doesn't play video games as much anymore but uh takes a certain aptitude to be able to play video games uh, in my opinion and um I'm willing to go wherever people are to talk about these issues cuz we're in that dire of a situation uh in our country and around the world so Twitch will be coming soon, spontaneously we'll let you know when that is as well as Hebrews podcast with myself and Professor Penn um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Professor Penn podcast on YouTube. Uh, he's a wealth of knowledge, and, and we thank him again for s sitting in while I was gone at the Big Three. Uh, there were a bunch of episodes that he did when I was gone. You, If you want, you can go back and, and watch some of those. I think they're some of the best podcasts we've had on Please Call Me Crazy, to be honest. I mean, the, the man is just a... a, a a wealth, a wealth of knowledge, uh, historical knowledge, personal experience, and and uh, very, very unique perspective given his own cultural uh, history and his own his own uh, life experience. So, uh, the Professor Penn podcast, please go and subscribe and and be ready for Hebrews. Hebrews is coming soon with myself and Professor Penn, as well as the Last Renaissance with myself and AJ Barker. AJ Barker will be back on the podcast in the days or episodes to come. Uh, we've been meaning to do a podcast for a long time, haven't been able to since I've been going at the Big Three, but that's long overdue as well. We may even make that podcast the first Last Renaissance podcast, and you'll be able to go watch and listen to that podcast on thelastrenaissance.com or the Last Renaissance YouTube channel, which already has a ton of content on it from my time in the Big Three with the I Flew Here series. Um, you can also go to freepeopleradio.com, which will tell you where you can follow the podcast where you can watch and listen to the podcast um, if you so choose to do so. Our patron platforms are almost up and running, almost up and up and running. We wanted to have a few checks and balances to make sure that we were safeguarded properly with the strange and, and wild new world we live in when it comes to being sued and censored and canceled and, and all these other things uh, when it, as it pertains to content and, and patronage. So um, we... We think that the, the three major patron platforms will be Locals, Subscribestar, and DonorBox, um, with, the, with the, uh, the caveat being that DonorBox uh, seems to be leaning a little woke, and, and we'll give them an opportunity, but we're, we're, we have a watchful eye on, on the direction that DonorBox is going. And we're even looking into creating our own platform that, that is uh, uh, for patriots, for American citizens who believe in having a country who are anti-globalist in terms of uh, money exchange, e-commerce, and, and donation platforms and things like that. There's a huge gap in our country, uh, in America, 
for an entire parallel economy, an entire parallel economy, entire an entire alternative economy, an entire patriot economy. And ultimately, in order to take back control, to, to take back uh, our sovereignty and, and to uh, take back uh, uh, our citizenship, the parallel economy is going to have to become a realization. It's going to have to become a real thing. It's going to have to become uh, something that we all commit to. Um, so with that being said, that's all the housekeeping I got for you. If I think of something else, I'll tell you. Uh, it's good to be back once again. I thank you all for your uh, your continued continued viewership and listenership. Uh, last night's episode, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you uh, you you got the spirit of of my frustration and the direness of the the issue that we now face or the the times that we're now in in this country. Um, we talked about Donald Trump's fourth indictment, and we also talked about um, Maui a little bit. I want to go a little deeper into the Maui situation today, and I want to talk more about um, the, the, the military-industrial complex and the potential for our government, and, and even more scary, third parties, independent companies, um, private companies, private sector contractors, or, or who, you know, whoever they may be, um, having the ability to uh, surveil us, to attack us with, with uh, advanced technology and weapons. So we're going to talk about that and much more on today's podcast. Again, I thank you all for being here. I'm happy to be back. I told you I was going to be spending a lot more time with you over the next couple of weeks, given the situation, given the circumstance. Uh, the circumstances of, of our country and, and recent news. Usually on Wednesdays, I do a news show where I'll go over these clips, and I think I'm going to start doing that again next week on Wednesday where we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do a news show, basically. And when I say news, I mean there'll be a number of stories that I pull up on the screen with you and, and, and we watch together, and then I comment or react in real time uh, to, to certain things that I've, I've uh, pre-picked uh, to discuss. So we'll start that up again next Wednesday, but but this Wednesday, there's there's no need for a bunch of clips and a, and a bunch of headlines or a bunch of reactions because this fourth indictment in the Maui situation are newsworthy enough. One moment, <clears throat> let me make sure I'm charging my cell phone here. I hate when that dies on me. That's a problem. And I've been on the phone so much this morning that I'm running out of juice. Also, um, in, in other news this week, I did announce that I will be running for the United States Senate in 2024 here in uh, this great state of Minnesota. And that launch video will be coming soon, hopefully early next week, maybe in the next two weeks. We'll see. We'll see. We want to make sure it's right. The website's getting finished, the brand new Royce White for Senate website. We're excited about that. A few documents need to be completed. We got to get our uh, official campaign donations platform up and running again with the merchandise and and, and that whole that whole uh, uh, process, which uh, can take a little bit of time, depending. Right, last time we went through Win Red, which I want to say, I know a lot of people have a lot of controversial opinions about Win Red. I'm not fully read up on everything that Win Red has done or hasn't done. All I can say is that there was some concern that when red was taking a huge percentage of, of campaign donations and, and giving it to, uh, or, or, um, basically, uh, you know, misappropriating the, 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 the money in the eyes of, of, uh, people who had donated money. And I can tell you from personal experience that as far as campaign donations went, and as far as the, the merchandise, uh, purchases went, they took a standard 2% of, of every, um, of every transaction. Uh, and I think that's fair. Look, I mean, look, we, we live in a capitalist society. I'm not trying to rake, uh, win red over the coals for, for taking 2%. Um, obviously when you add up 2% on a hundred million people, you got you got big money, but but I mean the same could be said for the one dollar apps that you buy or any add-ons or or things that you have in, inside any any of your apps. Or, I mean, a lot of you people pay fifteen dollars a month for HBO, 
Uh, so, I mean, you know, what are we talking about? And I'm not defending when red here. I just want to be clear. What I can say is myself as a young candidate who already has to deal with the full uh, scope of the of the political machine and the uniparty within it and all the the uh, the vanguards and 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 and, and, and double agents and, and everybody that's involved in this whole political landscape, um, there are very limited choices when it comes to official uh, sanctioned sanctioned donation platforms. And when red is one of them, it's the most uh, easy to use. And I said yesterday that convenience kills freedom. And I'm going to stick to that today. This when red situation maybe is a, a good example of that. Um, however, I don't have the time to find or, or create another, uh, uh, what do they call it? Digital transaction platform that can be okayed by the FEC. So we're going to go with Win Red. And I had a good experience with Win Red. I have, I have no complaints. I'm not saying that there's not something going on with Win Red that I'm not aware of. Uh, but as far as my campaign went, they took 2% on every dollar that was donated and they took 2% on every t-shirt or hat or hoodie that was sold. That's fine with me. What I will tell you on the flip side of that coin, and maybe it's important that we start the podcast here, as a matter of fact. Before we get back into Maui and the entire military-industrial complex uh, danger that's that's present in our country right now, maybe it is important that I talk about this now that I'm running for United States Senate. And I want to I be clear. My Senate bid, my Senate campaign is not just for the citizens in the great state of Minnesota. It's for citizens all across this country and really all across the world because the Senate— the United States Senate and the decisions that are made there have consequences for every single citizen in this country, and it has consequences for every single free person all around the world. We're we're at that time now in in this in this story arc. So my Senate campaign is for the free people of America and the free people of the world. And I would hope that you would support it in that way. I hope you would view it in that way. My Senate campaign is not just for Minnesotans, although my, my, my first duty and priority is obviously to, uh, to, to the citizens here in the state of Minnesota. But I think representing citizens in any given state right now, given the dire situation we're in, given the crisis and extreme circumstances we're in, defending the value of citizenship for individual citizens in any one state is pretty much defending them for citizens in every state in my opinion. The problems are that are that obvious. And, you know, one, first and foremost, first and foremost, energy. Energy is going to be a major, major focal point of my Senate campaign. Energy. What am I talking about when I say energy? Well, we can talk about oil and, and this entire climate change scam that's being run on, on the American people and people all over the world. Uh, but but let's talk about energy as in the, the manipulation and brokering of human energy. OK, that that's the energy I'm talking about. Uh, and, and, and this sort of economic Ponzi scheme where where, as I said last night, international an international cartel of banksters dominates, monopolizes and brokers the production and consumption of energy. Yes, natural resource energy, but even more importantly, Human energy, human energy. Um, energy is going to be a huge focal point. The three major, major uh, legs of, of my campaign in terms of policy, number one, term limits. We got to stop having these career uh, lifelong politicians. It's disgusting. It's disgusting, and it creates the, the, the incentive for corruption and, and sellouts, and that's what we have in D.C., and when I get to D.C., we're going to clean these sellouts out. We're going to clean, we got to clean DC out. We have to, we have to wash DC of the sellouts. And you can't, you can't just say it. I mean, we have to find a way to stop incentivizing our elected officials to sell out. Term limits. Let's, let's get people in and out of there. You come in, you serve your time, you go back on about your, 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 you know, your life. Now, if while you're in there, you want an insider trade like Pelosi or you want to do uh, shady international business deals like the Bidens or, or whatever the case may be. Hey, you got four years to do it, but we're not going to let you stagnate the entire American political system with your crony capitalism and your corruption. That's done. OK, 
term limits got to happen. And you'll see, and let me just say this, the referendum is on the American people. It's not really on the people in Washington. They can only do what you allow them to do. It, none of this is with it, none of this is outside of our control because none of it was without our consent. And the first referendum that needs to happen on the 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 swamp there in DC, the political elites there in DC is to propose term limits and watch which politicians vote for term limits and which ones don't. The ones who don't, you should never vote for again. Whether you're a Democrat, Republican, Independent, Green Party, doesn't matter. Any politician that doesn't accept or doesn't, doesn't want term limits is telling you they want the opportunity to be in D.C. for 30 years, make a career out of it, which opens them up to being compromised and eventually selling out to the dark side of foreign forces, domestic forces, independent corporate forces, whatever the case may be. You don't want those people representing you. It's very, very simple, and it's a very bipartisan worldview, I think, of, of what we should be doing politically in this country. Term limits, number one. Number two, no taxes. The tax scam is out of control. The taxes are out of control. The tax scam is out of control. The using all of these different issues and crisis and 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 you know agendas as a as a way to justify the the unconstitutional taxation of the American people is way out of control. No taxes. We got to have a seven year jubilee in this country and get this entire economic Ponzi scheme back under control. And it needs to start with the taxes. The federal government has become a leviathan. It, the federal government and the grandiosity of the federal government is bastardizing, is undermining the meaning of community. The more money you give the, the leviathan, the more power it, it, it has. The more powerful it becomes, the, the stronger it becomes. And effectively, the more tyrannical it becomes. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing the slow exchange of freedom and rights to a federal government that is grown way, way out of control. Taxes. No taxes. Seven years. Jubilee. And we'll revisit it in about four years. Let's, let's get our bearings around what's going on economically. Let's not let the tax, the taxation of the American people or taxes or, or budget items or, or whatever the case, none of it, none of appropriations, none of it. Let's not let that hang out there as a way to, to wage a secret economic war on the American people or to, to, to siphon taxpayer dollars to go to agendas that could potentially harm American citizens or undermine their, their freedoms, undermine their rights, undermine the value of their citizenship. Let's not allow that to happen. Seven-year jubilee, no taxes. The last one and final one, which I'm sure many of you are going to be upset about is reparations. No, we're not going to give reparations to Fanny Pack down there in Fulton, Georgia, although she may qualify. I'm not sure. Reparations. Reparations is to say, hey, listen, we know, we know that the country came from a business model of drugs, slavery, and, 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 and piracy. We understand that. We, we understand that the Democrats are going to try and outbid the Republicans time and time again and create a welfare state, a perpetual welfare state that never gives black people any incentive to actually become American citizens. And what do I mean by being an American citizen? What is an American citizen? Being an American citizen is being a shopkeeper. OK, this nation was supposed to be a nation of shopkeepers, a nation of agrarian uh, farmers that lived in the natural way, that lived off the land, that that had small independent businesses that were very community based, and the Second Amendment. That's the whole premise of of the inception of this nation, was to defect from the Crown's business model, which mistakenly we still kept some pieces of. Because when you go to start a new business, a new country, you can't really just start from scratch. I mean, our founding fathers were brilliant, but I, but. Come on, okay? You know, you, you take a little bit from where you came from, no matter what. All of us carry a little of the, the bad from our past into our future. That's just the way of the, the human condition. Uh, so, so, you know, when we came and defected from the Crown's business model, we still had some of those Crown tendencies in, in, in our own uh, country, in our own formulation of our own society here in America. 
slavery was one of them. Okay, slavery was obviously one of them. Uh, although it's worthy to note that there were many people who helped found this nation who didn't want slavery to be a part of this country, but were afraid of the crown. Uh, were afraid of the crown. Let's say uh, stopping, killing America in the cradle. Is at the time, remember, when we were just 13 colonies, we didn't have the power to really fight against the king. We we had to bring 13 colonies together, and then we had to, you know, d declare our independence. Uh, and, and we had to have some strength and some, some unity in order to declare that independence from the crown completely. And we went to war about it. I mean, this was the American Revolution, right? Uh, so eventually we fought them, uh, and, and that didn't stop slavery, but the 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 abolishment of slavery would come shortly after from, might I remind you, a Republican, a good Republican by the name of Abe Lincoln, who I'm not saying actually wanted to free the slaves for altruistic reasons, because you know, that might not be the case in, 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 in all honesty. I wasn't there. I know what happened. I know the result. I look at the results. I can go back and try and infer the motive, but I don't know what happened because I wasn't there. What I do know is that slavery became a hydra, became a Trojan horse to conflate states' rights with slavery and has become the, the real wedge between parties uh, and, and your average American voter since that time. Even more so since the 1960s and the, and the civil rights movement and the, the, the sort of revitalization of, a con of, the, of the discussion about race and slavery and the history of the country and the Marxists want to tell everybody that America is nothing but white supremacy and your rights don't matter. You need to become a global citizen and, and we're all going to be these posh, posh, yuppie, liberal, omnisexual, metropolitan world travelers. Sorry, I go on rants like that. If you're new to the podcast, it, it, it happens often. But my point is that there is something that took place in this country that was very specific to black people, and it has to do with slavery. And not only slavery, it has to do with the psychological and social ramifications of slavery that a great conservative thinker like Thomas Sowell has spoken about, uh, and the difference between, let's say, uh, slaves that were here in America versus slaves in the West Indies, and how the slaves here in America were actually kept from having certain responsibilities as a, as a means to control them, where the slaves in the West Indies were allowed to have a, a, a little bit more um, autonomy in their work style because there were less slaves, there were less slaves in the West Indies, so there was less of a need to control them in the same way psychologically. Something happened with slavery, something we need to atone for. But with that being said, Anybody who was a slave in America, let's open up reparations to everybody who was a slave. There were white slaves in America. There were Asian slaves in America. There were indigenous slaves in America. There were, there were, there were slaves in America of all sorts throughout our history. Many people wouldn't know that. And it's not by accident that many people wouldn't know that. So if you were a slave, we're going to get you reparations, okay? What we're not going to do is print fake money that we don't have and hand you cash. And any of you, any of you bourgeois, uh, black bourgeois sellouts who want cash reparations, I know you're a sellout. You're a fucking sellout. Okay. Go ahead and caucus with the Democrats. Get your favorite seven numbers together. Your telephone it probably will work fine. Get your favorite seven numbers together and, and, and pick out your favorite color and get ready for the dildo gulags because you're on your way. You're on your fucking way to a dildo gulag, I promise you, okay? If you want cash, if you want cash reparations, when the federal government and the entire globalist agenda is saying that we're going to a cashless society, not only are you a fucking sellout, you're a moronic sellout. Stay the fuck away from me. I don't need your vote. I don't need your support. All I need you to do is stay the fuck away from me. Thank you, okay? So we're not giving out cash. That's dumb. We're not giving out cash in a society where our dollar has been strategically put in flux by people that mean to undermine the sovereignty of our nation and our citizenship through economic corruption. Okay. We're not doing that. We're not giving you cash. What we can do, what we should do, what it makes sense to do is to 
bring our manufacturing back home to America to to onshore all of the manufacturing of the vital and essential industries that this country needs to operate, that this country needs to maintain its security, that it needs to maintain its its prosperity in, in the most general sense, its food, so on and so forth. All industries we need to get under control in a variety of under other ways, but first and foremost, maybe we need to onshore and make sure that none of our foreign enemies have too much control in vital, vital industries. Okay, so we're gonna onshore. Now, as a part of this reparations package, we're gonna onshore and give people who are descendants of slaves of all races the opportunity to be involved, give them priority to be involved in rebuilding this country. What's the best way to endear a man to his nation, which we've been radically detached from culturally today, right now? And that's not just black people, but they're using black people as a cudgel. But it's all people. We all have this sort of radical detachment from our national identity here in America, which is a huge, huge fucking problem. First, because we're going to war with two countries. We're at war with one country that has a profound sense of national identity. In Russia, the Russian culture is rich. It's 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 deeply, deeply philosophical, uh, and it is war tested. Okay, and we're going to war with the Chinese, and we're already at war with the Chinese. Number one, but we're on our way to a kinetic war with the Chinese, who also have a profound sense of national identity, and they they have a profound sense of of ethnic identity. They're ethno nationals to the max, which is so strange that all you Democrats talk about ethno-nationalism when it comes to white folks, but then you want to sell your fucking ass to Xi Jinping and the CCP. Another way I know you're a fucking sellout and also a moron, because there ain't no, there ain't no dildo throne for you waiting in China. When you get to China, you're going to be put in a concentration camp, and in that concentration camp, you will most likely be killed. Because they don't have no time. The, the Chinese, let me tell you something, all you black bourgeoisie sellouts, the CCP and the Chinese, they are willing to kill millions of their own people to execute their agendas. Millions. 400 million abortions in China. Okay. 400 million. One child policy. All you women want your autonomy. You ain't getting it in China. You ain't getting into a China-centric uh, global uh, society. Ain't happening. It ain't gonna happen. I'm, I'm telling you now. You, you think you want, you, you, you talk about autonomy? That's an American privilege. The fact that autonomy even comes into the scope of conversation for citizens is a, is a, is a, a unique, unique aspect of American citizenship and American culture, Western culture. In China, you don't get no fucking say. They killed. Many, many children with the one-child policy because women in China, nobody in China is anything more but the property of a government, a totalitarian and authoritarian government. If you're helping the government and the, the CCP, the Chinese communist way, achieve their goals, then you're fine. You'll get paid handsomely. As soon as you step out of line from the government's agenda, you get your ass killed in China. People die all the time. and People go missing in China all the time. But you want your autonomy. You don't want to be the property of a government. But you want to go to a China-centric society. You motherfuckers are sellouts. Like I was saying, we're going to onshore, and we're going to give people the option. We're going to give people incentive to be a part of rebuilding this country's manufacturing base, this country's vital manufacturing needs. Some things that come to mind, antibiotics, tires, rubber, that's a good one. Um, steel. Yeah, let's get the steel moving a little bit faster. I mean, we, we need to tr double and triple the steel because we're going to war. Sorry to say it. I don't want to be a warmonger. I certainly don't want to try and uh, 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 advocate that we give more money or more resources to the military industrial complex, but we're past the point of no return in the, in the, in the trajectory of some of these conflicts. 
we're going to war with China. We're at war with China. We're at biological war. We're at economic. We're in an economic war. Soon to be kinetic. You could argue we're already in kinetic war. I mean, they're already playing chicken in the South China Sea. The Chinese planes, the fighter jets are already coming and doing dangerous maneuvers with our fighter jets. Maybe we're doing it back to them. I don't know. Who knows and who's in charge anymore? I don't know. I know I'm going to the Senate to try and figure out and get answers to who the fuck is in charge. Okay. So we need to onshore reparations. How does it look? Everybody goes, well, how does it look? How, how, how are you going to do it? How, how, who's going to oversee it? Oh, shut the fuck up. Who's going to oversee it? Who's going to do it? Be we could do a lot fucking better than the federal government we got now, but we're going to need a re, uh, uh, we're going to need to revamp the leadership. We're going to need to revamp the leadership no matter what we do. We're going to need to revamp the leadership in this country to deal with the things we have already on the books. So all the, all the ideas of, of, of new things that we could implement to heal the country, to, to move the country forward in a positive direction, to, to take our country back from these international banking cartels, all of those things are going to need new leadership anyway. So I can't tell you who's going to lead. You at home are going to have to decipher for yourself what leadership means to you, who you're willing to follow. What's your, what's your criteria of leadership? This is a referendum on the American people. The American people have been found wanting when it comes to who we've allowed to represent us. I'm just putting my bid in. I think I could represent you pretty well. I know one thing, I'm not going to sell out. I'm not going to sell out. I'm not going to take no for an answer. And I'm going to ask the right questions. I don't know what more you could ask for a leader at this juncture because that's radically missing across the board. I mean, there has to be some basic prerequisites for leadership before we get to our aspirations. Okay. Reparations, how does it work? Well, if you're a descendant of a slave, here, you, 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 you come on. If we're going to print money, if we're going to print money, if we're going to use the United States Treasury, if we're going to use the full faith and credit of the American people, if we're going to use our military as a, as a, as a um, strategic economic advantage, okay, I, I kind of like that. But you have to become an equity society. You can't be a debt society. We don't need to be a debt society. We need to become an equity society. And when I say equity, I don't mean diversity, equity, and inclusion. I'm talking about financial equity. Debt and equity, okay? The, not the equity of the Marxist. That's an entirely different word. Equity as in worth, net worth, okay? Production, the means of production, the, 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 uh, the assets that one has, okay? We need to become an equity society. We can become an equity society. We have everything here in America. We have everything here in the Americas that we need to be a prospering equity society. The fact that we're a debt society is the full function of economic Manipulation of economic tyranny. That, that's, that's what it is. We, we don't need to be a debt society. We don't have to be a debt society. Us being a debt society keeps you in the position you're in now, feeling powerless, feeling hopeless, feeling demoralized, feeling uh, unable to impact the world around you politically, socially, culturally, feeling like just another cog in the machine feeling the insignificance, feeling the, 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 a, a level of insignificance under the weight and grandiosity of the federal government that has become this Leviathan that you are indebted to, that your social security number puts you in debt to as soon as you're born. All of you having children right now today, your children that are born when they take their first breath are going into debt because of the financial Ponzi schemes of our political elites. That doesn't have to be the way. Now, honestly, these D.C. elites, they'll try and tell you that this national debt of $32 trillion is, is a byproduct of the American experiment. America is not a fucking experiment. Anybody who tells you that America is an experiment, you need to tell to go fuck themselves. Don't vote for those people. This isn't a fucking experiment. It's a nation. It's a country with borders and people and a future. 
but some of them don't believe it has a future. And, and that's a telltale sign when they say it's an experiment. It's a very, you know, aristocratic, scientific approach to a person's home. It's not a fucking experiment. And you know how they treat the rats, right? You know how they treat the fucking guinea pigs and the grasshoppers or whatever other creatures that they do their experiments on. Sometimes it's humans. You don't want your nation to be an experiment. It's not an experiment. And the financial problems that we're having right now are not due to it being an experiment. They're experimenting, but it's not an experiment. Okay, the financial problems that we're having right now, the debt that your children are being born into is because they know what you haven't quite figured out yet. Their power, their power writ large depends on you buying in to the financial superstructure of our culture, of, 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 of our American society and, and, and believing in this sort of debt citizenship. That's what's taking place here. We all believe in the debt. We all believe in the debt. We believe that we, you know, that we owe. We all believe in the credit system. And we, you know, all of these fictitious financial instruments that are only meant to do two primary things. Keep you in a slave position. Really, you're slaves. Talk about reparations. Many of you are slaves now. Two different types of slavery. But effectively, you're wage slaves, you know different. You're not, you're not in change. You're not being whipped. We, we, you know, we evolved out of that. The banksters evolved out of that. In fact, if you really want to go back and look at it, the bank was smart to say, well, let's move everybody to wage slavery. I mean, it's a lot of work to keep whipping these Negroes into, into submission. I mean, why the fuck do we want to be bogged down with that all day? I mean, some of them did want to be bogged down with that all day because some of them liked their work, right? And those are your sociopaths that still walk around today. Many have Democrat lineage, I'm just saying. But some of them did like their work. Some of them like just to whip a, whip a Negro, right? Because they, they get off on it. <laughs> they get off on the dominance. But all the other ones who were really just interested in it from a, from a purely financial standpoint, they're like, oh, this, this slavery business, this is super inefficient. No, 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 no. Let me show you how to do this. This is what the inception of the Fed was. You, got, you guys got it all wrong. Let me show you how to do this. We're going to guarantee the slow and steady growth of security and materialism in exchange for fiat currency that everybody will willingly participate in. And all of the financial policies that go around fiat currency, like interest rates and, and so on and so forth, all of that stuff, people won't even really pay attention to as long as you give them some resemblance of security and materialism. If you give them some, some tangible resemblance of security and materialism, they'll effectively bend over and take whatever the fuck you want to shove up their ass. And if it's economic tyranny, if it's, if it's the Federal Reserve changing the interest rates and inflating the currency until the American dollar is worth almost nothing, until it's almost completely uh, bankrupt, they'll take it. They'll take it. They won't even know the difference. How are they going to know the difference? The entire education system is in our pocket. They work off the same fiat currency. Are you getting my drift? Are you getting my drift? I, I know it might be a tangent, but I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to help formulate how to look at this whole problem. And the major point is, when we talk about reparations, we're not talking about, I'm not talking about, I can't speak for anybody else, but I'm not talking about taking a guilty stick and whacking white people, whatever white means, again, uh, there is no white identity. Let's just be honest. You're, you're Irish, you're Italian, you're, 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 you're Norwegian or Scandinavian, you're German, you're French. You know, there's a, tons of European identities. Many times in history, they fought each other, they've enslaved each other, they've killed each other. It's the same as African nations. This whole identity thing really gets used to stifle people from uniting against the powers that be. Now, when we talk about American descendants of slavery, okay, this is a better and more tangible identity that we can quantifiably measure. If your people came from slavery, you get an economic incentive to help us rebuild the nation. Why? Because the nation did something to you that we agree was morally wrong. But what we're not going to do, what we're not going to do is take a, 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 you know, 
a switch to our own back and beat ourselves for something our ancestors did, because that's just cuckery, right? You know, we're not Silas from the Da Vinci Code where we, we go and we whip ourselves continuously for people to see because of our sins. No, we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is reconcile like sane, logical, and reasonable citizens, adults, men. We're going to reconcile. The best way to reconcile is to reconcile in a way that points everybody's boat in a similar direction where everybody wins, where everybody can get their beak wet, where everybody gets a piece of the action. Citizenship, the value of your citizenship. How can we help increase the value of your citizenship? How can we rebuild the value of your citizenship? How can we endear you to a nation that grants you that citizenship? We're going to give you a piece of it. Well, where are we going to get the land from? Let's start with Bill Gates's land. How about that? I got a great idea. Anybody who has any allegiance or business with the CCP, your land is now being considered for eminent domain. Many people don't know what eminent domain is. I invite you to go look up what the phrase eminent domain means. Some people would say, well, that's unconstitutional. Well, we just so happen to live in a country or in a time where the people who lead this country, the elites that, that preside over us, suspend with the Constitution anytime they want. And they do it in the interest of destroying the country. So I tend to think that we could actually do with a little around certain matters to rebuild the country, to help re-secure the country. Now, am I saying we should dispense with the Constitution altogether? Absolutely not. In fact, there are certain provisions in war times we are, our, our, our leaders are given to help ensure the safety and security and prosperity of the nation and its citizens. We're at war. They don't want you to know we're at war. Why? Because they're in a secret war with you. Our elites, our global, these global elites, they're in a secret war with us. Reparations. The best way to endear a man to his nation is to give him a piece of it. And I got a great plan to give each and every citizen a piece of the action to help rebuild this nation's manufacturing base. And when we become an equity society versus a debt society, people in this nation are going to naturally get more wealthy. When you go from being a wage slave to a shopkeeper, you're going to naturally become more wealthy. When you go from being a welfare ward to being a business owner, you're going to naturally get more wealthy. And if you let anybody tell you anything different, you're either A, scared to be the, the captain in your own ship when it comes to your financial destiny or future, or B, you're taking payments from these same corrupt people to bend over. Take the fucking dress off. Reparations. Now, term limits, just a, just a review. Term limits, taxes, reparations. Energy, which brings me to Maui, which brings me to Maui, which brings me to the directed energy weapons. I want to say first and foremost, my prayers are with the people in Maui. My prayers are with all, my thoughts and prayers are with all the people there in Maui, all the people that are affected by this this recent tragedy and, and crisis, uh, these these fires that have that that broke out in Maui over the last week, I I want to I want to send my love and my prayers to you all. Um, my my use of my own uh, head as a billboard during the Big Three game, or or my 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 career uh, to speak about those issues is not to try and be seen speaking about the issues for for me for for uh, popularity's sake, right? If I want to be popular. When the anti-Jews came to me from the NBA and say, shut your mouth and we'll turn you into a celebrity, I would have taken the money then. And you all would know me because without being arrogant and toot my own horn, I'm very articulate, I'm very handsome, I'm very driven, I'm very meticulous, I'm very, very detail-oriented. I could have been anything that, that I wanted to be under their rule, okay? And they made the offer. And I told them they could go fuck themselves. Same way I'm going to tell the globalists they can go fuck themselves when I get to D.C. I can't be bought. There's not a price that can pay for sacred honor. Okay. So but I say that if I wanted to do it to be popular, 
I, I, I wouldn't even be doing things like that. I'd be somewhere with $100 million wearing a dress to get some new acting role in some new Hollywood film that, that's promoting transgenderism because, I mean, that's easy to do. I mean, if I came out tomorrow, if I came out tomorrow and said I was sucking dick, they probably let me back in the NBA. Honest to God, I still got the skill set. If anybody watched the big three, they know that I'm still one of the most unique basketball talents that there is walking around. 6'8", 270 pounds, passes and sees the court like a point guard, handles the ball like a point guard, but is the strongest player on the court at any given time, no matter how big the opponents are. Just a sheer physical power that 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 is almost unmatched, where when I play and it, it comes to a battle of physicality, I make the other grown men look like they're children. Raw power. There's always a place for that in, in, in professional basketball. There's a place for that on every team. And the only people who are trying to convince you otherwise are those who have been made to brainwash and, and confuse the American people on what value actually is. They're in the scam of the debt society, okay? If I came out tomorrow and said I was sucking dick and that I was sorry for offending the NBA or talking about the CCP in China, I'd be able to play tomorrow. So I'm not doing anything I do for popularity. I'm doing it for one reason and one reason only, the truth and my own sense of sacred honor. So when I put Investigate Maui on the side of my head, the reason I did so is because the people of Maui represent exactly how the federal government views every last one of you working class, poor, uh, uneducated, uh, lower educated um, uh, uh, marginalized uh, individuals all across the world. This is just where the ax is coming down first. This is just where their negligence and their arrogance and their elitism is, is, is rearing its ugly head first. They're just getting the first glimpse of it, and I feel bad for that because right now the rest of the American people aren't awake enough yet to realize that they just came to get the first people on your street. And I know Maui seems like it's a world away. I know Maui seems like it's, 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 it's a, a, a place far, far away. And that's not by accident. It's not by accident that it, 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 it happened where it happened. It's not by accident. It's meant to feel like it's a world away. It's meant to feel like it's a place far, far away beyond your reach. So you feel like you can't do anything about it. And many of you can't do anything about it. And that's unfortunate. That's sad. That's, that's, that's disappointing. That's, that, that makes me feel terrible for the people there in Maui. But it's a sign of things to come. And when I say investigate Maui, I say it because regardless of what took place, we, the people, should always demand answers. We should always demand answers of the people in power in this country. Those are our people. Those are American citizens. I don't care how many miles they are off the coast. Those are American citizens, and we should demand answers, real, transparent, and truthful answers about what took place there. There should be a full investigation into what took place there in Maui. Now, there's a lot of theories out there, a lot of theories about a directed energy weapon or some, something of that nature something very military, something very scientific or technologically advanced that took place there. And I want to talk about that today for a little bit. Again, my prayers and thoughts are with the people of Maui. Uh, we, 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 we demand that answers be, that, that questions be asked, that an investigation takes place, that answers, that answers are, 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 that answers can be given to the American people and the people of Maui about what took place. And, and until that happens, all many of us can do is speculate. And it's our right to speculate. It's our right to use the knowledge that we have uh, formally, historically, culturally, politically, economically, to speculate about the nature of what took place there in Maui. And even maybe, maybe even more importantly, or even more reasonably, uh, it's 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 important for us to speculate. It's important for us to speculate. We should speculate, okay? 
Direct energy weapons. I mean, I said it yesterday. Many people don't even know that direct energy weapons exist. They don't even know that direct energy weapons are up and running, up and functional. And what's really scary is you don't, we don't even, we, we think of advanced technology and weapons as a, as a property or as a, a, a product that is, is exclusive to the federal government, the scope of the federal government and, and this sort of uh, security, security state of, of the American uh, government and the American military. Not true. Not the case. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. The private sector and private sector companies that are, are, are merchants of the military industrial complex have these types of weapon systems. They have these types of advanced weapons and technology. They make them before they make them and sell them to the American government or they're used by the American government. They are tested within the within the the jurisdiction of these private corporations Lockheed Martin Boeing Raytheon the list goes on you can find them you can find them they're running experiments right now all across the country all across the country they're running experiments all around the world and they'll tell you that they're doing it for our security they'll tell you that we have enemies out there which we do that justify the need for this type of research, this type of this type of technological advancement. And it's been that way since the end of World War II. Fascism will break out. Uh, uh, white supremacy will break out. Racism will break out. Tyranny and authoritarianism is on the loose. And we have to continuously fund and build these advanced technologies and weapon systems in order to, to, to hold off the evil of the world. Okay. Okay, fine. I, I get it. Fine. And secrecy what? Gives you tactical advantage? Okay, but at what point do the American people say, we feel secure enough? I mean, again, it goes back to what I said. When you give up, when you give the American people, American citizens, some resemblance of security and materialism, they will give away their rights. And in return, they will not be secure or have freedom. I mean, that's the biggest three card Monty in our in, in, in our nation's history that we got into these wars and we let wars or the outcome or result of wars and our fear. Abnegate our rights and our citizenship in, in pursuit of security and materialism, three card Monty. Raytheon, Boeing, Lockheed Martin. All these major military industrial contractors, researchers, developers, manufacturers, all of them have capabilities. All of them are testing weapons. Who knows when? Who knows where? Who, who knows? Who, who's overseeing it? Where's the oversight? The, the Congressional Oversight Committee? The, the, you know, what are we talking about? Who, who, who are uh, Ilhan Omar? Ilhan, you think Ilhan Omar? Ilhan Omar doesn't know her mouth from her fucking asshole. And you think she has the, the, the intellectual competency to oversee, the, the, to rigorously oversee and, 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 and be moral or, or honorable and, and not take a payoff to look the other way when it comes to advanced weapons and technology? You think Ilhan Omar gives a fuck about the people in Maui? She didn't even give a fuck about the people in her own district. You think AOC gives a fuck about the people in Maui? And if some, some uh, uh, private sector, some private uh, military manufacturer tested a weapon that killed 100 people or, and, and has many, many more people displaced and missing in Maui, you think they give a fuck? They don't care. They don't care. They're showing you they don't care. They're, they're showing you what their focus is. They're showing you what the priority is. The priority is to go to war with Russia. The priority is to send another $100 billion of American tax money to put your children in debt to go to war with a country that they provoked. Maui's an afterthought. Who cares about some Hawaiians? They should be happy that they live there on a paradise anyway. That's how these elites really think about the people in Maui. And there is sort of a tone of racism in it, although, like I said, Ilhan Omar and those people aren't any different. This ain't about racism. This is about elitism. It just so happens the history of our 
modern civilization had racism baked into the elitism. Other than that, they'll take anybody out they, they need to. They'll take, any, they'll take any slaves they can. Direct energy weapons. Direct energy weapons. Become familiar with the term. Understand when you hear the term direct energy weapons, you are talking about weapon systems that are beyond your comprehension. These are weapon systems that you're not supposed to know about. These are weapon systems that they talk about in public, that they go on the record about, but you're never supposed to really get familiar with. By the time you become familiar with them, it'll be too late. They're still telling you you shouldn't have an AR-15, but they got directed energy weapons. You see the game? White liberal women are telling me the KKK is afoot. Then they're telling me the KKK are the police. Then they're telling me to give up my guns, give up my guns and call the police whenever the KKK shows up. You see the game? They're still trying to get you to give up your pistol. Meanwhile, they're manufacturing, manufacturing directed energy weapons. Do you see the scales tipping here between the government and the people? I mean, especially when Joe Biden goes right out and says it in the public. Never forget when Joe Biden says, hey, if you if you think you're going to if you think you're going to fight back against a tyrannical government, you're going to need F-16s. Right. Telling the American people that they would need F-16s to combat to combat the, the, a tyrannical government here in this country. Well, number one, it's not true. You don't need F-16s. You don't know. You don't need F-16s to rebel against the, a tyrannical government. That's a lie. Because every army, every, every army, every army, every commander, every, every battalion, every unit, every, every, uh, whatever it is, every regiment is only as strong as the people who have the key. Any, any army, any leader, any commander, any technology is only as strong as the people who have the key which is the real danger of artificial intelligence because soon they'll put the keys in the hands of people of people <laughs> they'll put the hand the, the keys in the hands of people or they'll put the keys in the hands of machines that don't need water that don't need sleep that don't need food and when that takes place it will become very difficult to fight back against the tyrannical government. And none of these little fucking cucks like Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos or any of these other little tech fucking nerds who you guys have such an infatuation to see and get in an octagon and flail around and smack each other with their out of shape, uh, pale bodies. None of these motherfuckers are, are going to tell you the, the reality of the situation. You know, they might fart around it. Oh, you know, that AI is dangerous. It's going to displace the human in intelligence or blah, blah, fucking blah. No, the real problem with it is tyranny is going to become indefensible when you can put the keys of the, the essential technology or the essential whatever information in the hands of machines that don't eat, sleep, or breathe. Then you'll have problems. When you put them on a power source that cannot be compromised, a, 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 a perpetual, a self-sustaining, self-sustaining, perpetual power source, then you're fucked. When you can't cut the power on the machines, you're fucked. And they all know it. They all, what is going on here? What is this infatuation with artificial intelligence? What is this infatuation with, with, this, with these advanced weapon systems? Are we really supposed to believe that this is all about defense? That this is all about security? That this is all about the fear of another nation? That this is all about our, our fear of whatever would-be enemies out there? Are we supposed to believe that's what this whole thing is about? This, this, this whole obsession with technology and science? What is going on here? What is going on here? Why is the establishment going so far out of their way to say that there's no way, that there's no, there's no chance that Maui and the fires there in Maui were caused by advanced weapons and technology. I mean, it's not even possible. It's, it's, it, it's certainly possible. It's certainly possible. And if you listen to people there in Maui, a lot of them think it's probable. Where are the answers? 
We want answers. You can't make us crazy. You can please call me crazy. Call me crazy. We want answers. We want answers about Maui. We want answers about the potential of, of, of advanced weapons and technology in general. And don't tell us that we can't know or else our enemies will know as well and we won't have strategical or, or tactical advantage, military advantage. Don't fucking tell us that, okay? We're, we're, we're coming to the point that JFK and Eisenhower predicted. We're coming to the point that JFK and Eisenhower and many others predicted where the threshold for military capacity is now going to have the 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 is now going to reach a place where it can be too easily weaponized against us and have us buy into it, you know, uh, promoted by our own fear of, of some, some other threat. This is exactly what JFK said in his speech about secret societies and communism. He, he said it very plainly. He said, I, he, he said, you know, we cannot allow the military industrial complex to become too big or, or to basically have <coughs> no oversight in pursuit of defending ourselves against this communist threat. He said it. And General LeMay and Dulles and, and Bush and all. I mean, don't get me started on JFK, okay? That, that was one of the huge, huge mistakes of the American people is letting that whole thing go. That was, that was probably the first domino to drop. But here we are. 60 years later, here we are. And we're right on the brink of it. You got a fire break out on the most the humid, on the mo you got a fire break out across an island on the most humid place in America. And everybody's supposed to believe the, 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 the you know, the accepted narrative. Everybody's supposed to believe the mainstream media, the same mainstream media who you can see, uh, who you can go watch 70 local anchors say the exact same, read the exact same news in the exact same tone with the exact same inflection points in the sentences, that mainstream media, we're supposed to believe you. We don't believe you. We don't believe you. We rightfully don't believe you. All you, all you cuck motherfuckers around doing the local news and your and your and your and your uh, and your and your two big suits, or your or your or your uh, cheap looking uh, uh, you know ugly ass pants suits for for the women. Or now, I mean, now they're letting women just you know have their titties out on the news or the fucking weather or whatever the f fucking case is. Okay, so so whatever it is, we don't believe you people. You people are full of shit. I don't believe you about Maui. I don't believe you about gain of function. I don't believe you about Pfizer. I know Pfizer's giving you checks. I don't believe you. And, and the other, again, I'm looking at the Donald Trump indictment, and one of the charges, I think in D.C. it was, one of the charges was conspiracy, conspiracy of rights. Conspiracy of rights. I looked at the charge, I'm like, conspiracy of rights? I mean, let's think about rights for a minute. Conspiracy. It's a conspiracy to what obstructs, obstruct the rights of citizens. What, what does this charge even really mean? I mean, I know what it reads, but I mean, the conspiracy to, to uh, conspiracy against rights, conspiracy against rights. <coughs> really? This government, this department of justice, this, this crop of district attorneys, they, this, this Washington, D.C. elite, they want to talk about a conspiracy against rights? Really? Are you fucking kidding me? What about the conspiracy against the freedom of speech? What about the conspiracy to consent, willingly consent and knowledgeably consent to vaccines that are mandated? What about the, what about the right to question uh, medical authority? We had, an, we had an episode pull, pulled down recently. I think it was episode 72, if I'm not mistaken, maybe 76. We had an episode pulled down for even questioning the WHO.
What about our right to free speech? What about the conspiracy against that? What about using the internet as the the most the the most um the most massive and efficient means of communication, mass communication of all time in human history to our knowledge? What about using that to set the threshold for communication to indoctrinate and enculturate a, a, a modern means of communication and then start to cancel and censor people on that on that medium? As though because the Internet is new technology, then the, the Constitution is is hard to understand or comprehend when it comes to tech to, to in the Internet. And, and I'm telling you, <coughs> that's a herald of of more to come. As, t- as, as science and technology grows, there's going to be this, this natural uh, attempt. There's going to be this, I won't call it natural, it's not natural, unnatural. There's going to be an unnatural attempt to justify how the Constitution can no longer, uh, you know, uh, be related to these types of advanced matters. Oh, the con- and you hear it already. Oh, the Constitution was, you hear it from the left already in the Democrats. Oh, the Constitution was written when people were still farming and had muskets. What do you think is going to happen when they have, when, when they're producing babies en masse with ecto farms? Oh, you don't know about the ecto farms. And many of you don't even know about the ecto farms. Oh, yeah, the Clone War. Well, we're on the brink of the Clone War now. The Clone War is coming. Human, human clones. Human clones. I mean, if human clones sound far-fetched to you, then I know direct energy weapon will sound far-fetched to you. But you must understand that the human cloning initiative is just as real as the direct energy weapons. I mean, it's almost here. Just Google it. First ecto farm, just Google it. Taking sales from uh, whatever, stem cells, and being able to grow them into a live, viable, flesh human. And you know, as they say, if the if the science, if the science is 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 uh, if the science is good enough to be spoken about in the mainstream and 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 uh, promoted to be up and running shortly, they've been doing it for 10, 20 years. What are the implications of that? What does the Constitution say about clones, clone babies, clone humans? Are they going to have rights? Does a clone have rights or, or, or does the clone belong to the corporation? Is the clone a citizen? Or is the clone the property of the corporation? Questions. Things we must ask. Things a United States senator should be asking on the Senate floor. And maybe there are some asking. I think the, they could use another voice like mine to come and, and, and to come through the Senate floor with a big cross. Maybe get some holy water. Maybe I'll rebuke the, Uni- the, the United States Senate floor with some holy water and ask a question like that. With the prospect of the technology and the science uh, that that the, that there is technology and science that could potentially potentially create viable flesh humans, do these humans have rights? Is anybody going to have the balls to propose legislation about cloning now before it ever ha- start before it before it gets up and running? Or are we going to use the same excuse we use now with the internet? Oh, it's it's new. Oh, we're we're in uncharted territory. <laughs> we we don't know necessarily how the Constitution applies to matters like uh, YouTube or or the internet. Are human clones citizens, human beings, or are they the property of the corporation that makes them? Questions. How does this relate to Maui? The point is, the science is way out and over your head right now. Way out and over your head. And because it's way out and over your head, the safe thing to do is to assume that people are as fucked up as they've shown us they are. Okay, That people are as fucked up and twisted and wicked as they've consistently showed they are. That's the safe thing to, to do. That's the safe thing to assume. That's the prudent thing to assume. That people are fucked up. 
that corporations with a lot of people who are fucked up are even more fucked up. They're even worse. You know, pardon my language. I had some people say yesterday, oh, 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 I really, I really like and support you, but until you start dropping the F-bomb, man, I just, I just couldn't take the F-bomb. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm a Christian. I, I'm trying to live a righteous life. I couldn't take the F-bomb, and I'm so glad that my child wasn't there to hear you drop the F-bomb because it's just so vulgar. What's more fucking vulgar than them taking stem cells and creating a human flesh, uh, a, a flesh human that doesn't even get a social security number, that isn't even considered a human? They're considered a, 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 a piece of property. What's more vulgar than that, you lukewarm milk toast motherfuckers? What is more dangerous and vulgar than global elites reaching a point where the economic and military scams, the, the economic and military agenda is, is working so efficiently that you're more concerned about profanity than you are your basic civil rights and freedoms? You think God would want it that way? You think Jesus would want it? You, Europe, you know, the one thing that European, the one thing that could be said for Europe is that they really did turn Christianity into a post-enlightened sort of philosophical finocchio faith, okay? Not a warrior's religion. Christianity is a warrior's religion, okay? You, 501c3 Christians that merged Christianity with the government with this little unspoken agreement that you stay over there and we'll stay over here as long as you protect us, okay? You motherfuckers are the reason why we've lost the country. I'm just going to be honest with you. You may not like it. You may not want to support me. I'm not here to be liked. I'm here to lead, and, and there is no leadership if we're not leading in honesty and truth. And the truth is Christianity has failed this country because you Christians are too fucking soft. The F word offends you but they're going to build an ecto farm in your backyard and there'll be fucking clones walking around your neighborhood and you won't even know it. And you'll be paying, you'll be paying tax money for fucking clones to go to public school. And you're worried about the F word? They got direct energy weapons up and running with third-party military industrial corporations that have no government oversight, that have no government regulation, that have no standards for health and, 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 and uh, health and safety or consideration for American citizens, and you're worried about the F word? Go fuck yourself. Go caucus with the fucking Democrats. If you're, worried, if you're more worried about the use of the F word and profanity then you are the military industrial complex having dangerous advanced weapons and technology that could be being, that could be used on you right here today go caucus with the fucking democrats we don't need you we don't need you see me i don't need a thousand seals i need 10 pipe hitters i don't want a thousand seals I don't want a thousand fucking dolphins. I want 10 sharks. Right now, we're living in a time where a thousand seals will get your ass killed. They will get you blindsided by the dangers of what's coming. And I'm, I'm not trying to be an alarmist. I'm just telling you all, this is where we are. This is actually where we are. I know it's uncomfortable. I know it doesn't feel good to hear that the, that the American government that you've given over your freedom to has reached this level of sophistication and potentially corruption. I know, it, I know it's tough to hear. I know, I know, I know. After, after 74 minutes of it, it's like, oh, it's like an experience. It's like I, I, my energy is drained. It's just too much doom and gloom. I can't take it. Go caucus with the fucking Democrats. You want to live in bliss? You want to be blind and blissful? Go caucus with the fucking Democrats, you milk toast 501c3 motherfuckers. Lukewarm milk toast motherfucker. Go caucus with the fucking Democrats. Just get the fuck out. Just get the fuck away from the. Get the fuck out of here. 
And I, I can't wait till the political season starts and we have these town halls and we have all of these, you know, these Republican meetings and these, these, I cannot wait because I'm going to tell you people in person, I'm going to be the one to tell you, get the fuck out of here. Go caucus with the fucking Democrats, you milk toast motherfucker. We are at war. This has been another episode of Please Call Me Crazy, brought to you by our favorite sponsor, TireGit.com. Brought to you by Free People Radio and powered by our favorite sponsor.com. You have to buy tires from somebody. You might as well buy them from us. Help fund the movement, the parallel economy. We got to build our own economy now. We don't want milk toast motherfuckers. We don't want to be relying on milk toast motherfuckers. We want pipe hitters. We're at war. We need warriors. We need companies and corporations and people with money, small, independent business owners, a nation of shopkeepers who are willing to help fund the movement. We need them. We need to give them our dollars when we can, when we can. And after we do the reparations and we, we onshore America's manufacturing and we make it easier for the average American citizen to own a successful small business, then, then it'll become easier for us to support the people with our dollars that actually believe in having the country. I want to mention our other two sponsors. MyBookie.com. You may not like gambling, but they have a ton of ton of games and other things. You can bet on MyBookie.com. Go put on, go type in promo code Royce and 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 uh, enjoy uh, bonus points. You know, b- b- bonus uh, uh, cash to start to play. Uh, that's MyBookie.com with promo code Royce, and you can also go to GhostBed.com. Our other incredible sponsor, GhostBed.com. Uh, put in promo code Royce and enjoy. 30% off, I believe. I think it's 30% off, maybe 40. 40% off, 30% off uh, your first purchase with ghostbed.com. You got to get a good night's sleep. Look, me, this doesn't bother me. I, this is what I, I'm, I'm, I'm a warrior. You eat, you sleep, you go to war. But you got to get some good sleep. Ghostbed.com. Get yourself a nice mattress. Go to sleep. Help fund the parallel economy. It helps us out when our advertisers get uh, purchases and see that the promo code is actually working. So at least go visit the site. Oh, just just go visit promo. Just go visit Ghostbed uh, and and go visit my bookie and go visit Tire Get. Just browse around a little bit. Maybe you don't need tires or a bed or don't want to bet today. Maybe you will in the future. Become familiar with the sites so that when you do. When it does click in here, oh, man, I need a mattress or I need sheets or I need pillows or I'd like to bet on uh, the, 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 whatever the case may be. I don't know what sports you watch. The big three, big three will be the playoffs are starting in D.C. I'm not playing, but uh, it's going to probably be a very competitive, competitive weekend there in Washington, D.C. So go bet on the big three. I'm sure that'll be fun. Um, tire get. Yeah, everybody needs tires. I think you buy them once a year. Whenever you get ready to buy tires, make sure that you go to TireGit.com. They got installers right there in your neighborhood where you can get the tire from the manufacturer brought to the installer near you in the same day service. Helps out. It helps out. And look, I know this. I know this. This. This podcast can be dramatic. I understand. I understand. It's a lot of information. It's a lot to deal with. But here, this is where we are, people. Whether you're directly responsible for the decay and the slow decline of this nation or not, doesn't really matter. We're all here now. And the more desperate things become, the more information, the more tough information you will have to confront in order to change the circumstance that you find yourself in. I'll say that again. The more dire the situation becomes, the more tough information you will have to confront in order to change the circumstance you find yourself in. So it's better for you to do it now. I appreciate your viewership and your listenership today and in the future. I look forward to seeing you on Friday for a special guest episode. Um, The fight continues. Don't die a jerk off. And as always, Godspeed.